Everybody, how you doing? Be back in here. Let's get it. Yes, sir. And, and I don't know who I was going to uh, come in, but uh, I'm just going to go straight to the lesson. Like I said, this is a double dose one, so I ain't going to stay on too, too late. But I definitely appreciate you for being in, my brother, as well as Brother Sharp. We ain't operate the corner time, bro. We in eternity. Come on. All praises, <laughs> Amen. Well, let's let's get ready to get started. And whoever comes in, you know, maybe they'll come in later on. This is going to be our foundation text. It's going to be found in 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, Paul made a statement that he got pretty much from the Messiah, which a lot of people, they use this text to say that the New Testament people are making things up. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you. Uh, hold on real fast. I mean, I, I didn't. Uh, my man, let me uh, invite some people in, y'all, if you guys don't mind. I forgot to invite people in. I'm just not talking. Hold on. Let me invite some people in. So. And a lot of people got their um, their stuff turned off, so we can't invite them in. So, all right, there we go. All right, let's continue. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered you unto you first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. Oh, yeah, give me about 15 seconds. Yeah, give me that side. I got that side. I'm heading out to the garage anyway. That's why I got all my books and stuff. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I had, uh, we got, uh, this got to turn down a little, uh, things going on here. All right. So, notice Paul said, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How the, So this is information that was received. How? Now, understand, this information wasn't out in the open like that. This information, we got to do something with that. This information, because that wasn't always like that. So, yeah, we got to do something. That this information was received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And what they would say is, what is Paul talking about? that Christ was going to rise up the third day according to the scripture. What scripture is that? So now we're going to go back to Luke 24. Luke 24. And this is what Luke 24 says. Luke 24 44 through 47. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. 
Then he opened their understanding. Oh, oh, sorry. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So what is stated right there is that what the Messiah is telling his disciples was something that had to be open up to them for them to understand. So this is an information that jumped off the pages and into the, the mindset of the disciples. No, no, no. This information that Christ gave them had to be opened up to them for them to actually understand the scriptures. So he said they had scriptures, but they did not understand the scriptures. So listen to what it says. And he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. But what we're talking about is this rising from the dead the third day. Understand that the information about Christ rising from the dead the third day that came from the scriptures had to be understood through Christ. Now, once you go to 2 Corinthians, right? And then we're going to go right back. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, starting at 13. And not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. This is their minds, their thoughts, their minds. For until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the old testament or the old covenant so understand paul was saying that they had the scriptures but it was a veil over them that was blocking their understanding but this is what paul says which veil is done away in christ so understand when there's a reading of the Old Testament, there's a block in people's mind. But that block is done away in Christ. So this is verse 15. For even until this day, for even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. And anybody want to come on stage, uh, just let me know. We'll bring you up on stage and mind, and mind you up. But anyway, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So understand, once again, verse 16. When a person turned to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So it was understood. It was understood. That there was a blindness that fell upon people who read the Holy Scriptures, but that blindness is taken away when a person turns to the Lord. That's why in Luke 24, the disciples being turned to the Lord, he can open their understanding for them to understand Christ in the Old Testament. So now, I want to show you something real fast. So we just read Luke 24, 44. We're going to read Luke 24, 13. And then we're going to skip down to 25 through 28. Listen to what happens. 
And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs or four furlongs. I looked that up and some scholars got that being between seven through seven and a half miles. And then there's other manuscripts that says even longer. Like, I think it was like 40 miles or something. It increased the furlongs. But anyway, let's just leave it to the seven or the seven and a half miles. So approximately walking, according to Google, walking, it should take two hours and 20 minutes or two hours and a half to walk that far. So listen to what happened from the two hours of walking. This is verse 30, uh, hold on, verse 25 to 28. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? First thing first, people have to understand that the Messiah is saying all the prophets spoke of his the torture he had to go through and the outcome of the torture. So once you go back to the prophets and see what the prophets are prophesying, it seems like they're prophesying historical events. That's the veil that's over people's hearts. The historical events. But those that veil is done away in Christ. So now look at what he said in verse 27. And beginning at Moses. So he started at Torah. And all the prophets. He go through all the prophets. He expounded unto them. And all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. Now. Did people know. There's things dealing with Christ and Samuel, Joshua, Judges, maybe even find it in Ruth. You can all, then you go to uh, keep going on till you reach the minor prophets and then the major prophets. Christ is speaking to these people two plus hours about all the things found about him inside the Old Testament. Have people done that today? When people say, hey, what is talking about Christ? Christ had a two hour and a half dialogue going, starting at Moses and going through the prophets saying, this is about me, this is about me, this is about me, this is about me. This is about me. This is about me. The reason why he had to explain to the people these things were about him was because it wasn't written in the open. It's not written in the open. These things are about the Messiah. It's written underneath so he has to explain these things are about me because it's not in the open so now i'm gonna go through john and i'll open it up see if anybody got anything to say before we move on so this is john 5 and notice what the messiah tells the jews that here's the uh 
the background, John 5 and 1. And this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up into Jerusalem, and etc. This is verse 24. Verily, verily, well, and then you can go to 15. That man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which made him whole, and therefore the Jews went to persecute Jesus, and etc. So he's talking to the Jews at that time. Verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So first thing first, they got to believe on the Lord and etc. And then they get everlasting life. So, I want to go down to 39 now. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life. See, first in verse 24, he said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life now he's saying in verse 20 uh sorry verse 39 they were searching the scriptures for in the scriptures they thought they had eternal life so you see they're looking at the scriptures thinking that's where that's talking about how they're going to gain and have eternal life meanwhile christ had already told no the everlasting life comes from whoever that hears my words and believe it on the Father. But let's keep reading. It says, and they are they which testify of me. So Christ already was bringing the information out that the scriptures that people was using to think they had e to, to, to was going to get eternal life. They was just a testimony of the Messiah. Let's say that again. That's got to really get inside of our minds. The scriptures was just a testimony of the Messiah. So when you're reading the Old Testament, you're supposed to be seeing this is talking about the Messiah. Let's keep going on. And, uh, and ye will not come to me that you may have life. Let's read 46 to 47. For had you believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. And then what people would do, they go to Deuteronomy 18 and 18 and say, yeah, that's right there. He, he's talking about that prophet right there. That's talking about the Messiah. Sir, ma'am, Moses wrote of him, period. Not just in Deuteronomy uh, 18 and 18. Not just there. All over Torah, Moses wrote about the Messiah. It says, but if ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? We got a creator that Moses wrote about. We got this angel of the Lord that Moses wrote about. We got Joshua, who name was who name was uh what was his name before Joshua? Um was it none or something? But his name was actually changed into Joshua after Moses has spoken to the word, showing that Joshua, which is the same name of Jesus. That, that conversion over to Joshua actually taking over the children of Israel was a testimony of the real Joshua taking over the children of Israel. You got Joshua who met the the uh, the Lord of hosts. And except, we can go through all of the things that, uh, but that's in Joshua. But we can go through all of the things that led up into that. 
on how uh, Moses was told to take off his shoes before he was on holy ground, how the Lord uh, gave Moses these uh, abilities in order for uh, him to do in the sight of Pharaoh, how the Lord was able to make Moses um, a God before his enemies, uh, how the whole Adam and Eve narrative came about and the one that was made after the image of God in uh, Genesis chapter one and so forth and so on. I I'm not going to go through all of it because it could be tedious, but the Messiah is saying the things that you read in the Torah and the prophets is just a testimony about me so once you go into there and you start talking about solomon and david and uh the kings and the priest aaron and all of them you start missing the point so now i will open it up and see if anybody got anything that would like to say before we continue on. Because now we're going to get into what the three days and stuff was that Christ said was written about him. Just keep on trying, bro. Oh, yes, sir. And y'all check the, sh uh, the chat. Sharp uh, corrected it. So I appreciate that, Sharp. I right, go ahead, uh, 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 brother. Bless. I uh, saw you come off mic. Yeah, you came off mic, uh, but you didn't say nothing. Did you got anything to say? Yeah, you might have to come out and co go out and come back in if you're trying to say something. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, we seen you going off mic, but you ain't saying nothing. So you might have to go out and come back in. How right are now? Yeah, we hear you now. Oh, you you were saying? I heard. I, I was doing something. You were saying that Christ was uh, sitting somewhere for two hours talking to people. What, what, what was that at again? What were you talking about? Yeah, that's Luke twenty four thirteen and. Tw mm -hmm. 25 through 28, when they uh, walk the three score furlongs, which is about seven and seven and a half miles, uh, he took that whole time expounding to the two gentlemen things about him out of the law, well, out of Moses as well as the prophets. And that walk is about two hours and 20 minutes, two hours uh, and 30 minutes. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. All uh, right. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. So it, you can tell it was more than just one simple verse. He didn't go to like, hey, Deuteronomy, uh, when Moses said there's a prophet coming, uh, that was speaking about me. No, he spoke to them two hours and something out of Moses and the prophets showing everything concerning him. So now uh, let's go into these three days because now we have the understanding that christ said the things in the scriptures was a testimony about him so let's go to genesis 40 genesis 40 I want to start at verse number nine, and I'm going to read through 13. Then I'm going to read 15 and 20 through 21. Genesis 40, 9 through 13, 15, 20 through 21. This is what it says. And the chief butler, so this is dealing with Joseph. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, 
and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes and pressed them. You see that wine press? And pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. Verse 15. This is what Joseph, well, I started on 14. But then, but think of me, but think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness. I pray thee unto thee and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they shall put me into the dungeon. Remember Christ said, these scriptures are what testify of me. Don't get caught up in the characters. This is verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, when he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership. And he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. And he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him. But notice the interpretation. You're going to be restored after three days. One of you will be hanged. The other will be restored after three days. Remember Christ said, it's what testifies of me. Remember Paul said, when they read that old stuff, a veil is over their hearts. But that veil is taken away in Christ. And what did Christ do? He started at Moses and went through the prophets, showing all things concerning him. So now, let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 30, 1 Samuel chapter 30, I'm going to start at verse number 10 and go down to verse 13, 1 Samuel 30, 10 through 13, but David, ah, now we're dealing with David. First, we was dealing with Joseph. Now, who became one of the governors over Egypt, as well as his brothers. Now, we're talking about David, who is supposed to be the king of Israel, who is the governor, the king over his brothers. Let's see what happened with David. Verse 10. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind which 
were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian. My, how is this so similar? In the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat. And they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisin. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. So what happened here? This man who was void of spirit because of his hunger and thirst, void of spirit, the King David had his servants give this man water and bread, which caused his spirit to come back to him because he had been destituted for three days and three nights. So after three days and three nights, this guy was revived by David, giving him bread and water. Let's go to some more. Let's go to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 6. Oh, let me actually get there. Hosea trying to hide from me today. Hold on one second. Gotta be over here. And if you're already at Hosea chapter 6, just wait on me. I'm, I'm close there. Okay. Thank you. Hosea 6, 1 through 2. Listen to what's stated. It says, this is about Israel, the northern kingdom, to be exact, this is about the children of Israel. Verse number six, I mean, sorry, chapter six, verse number one and two. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He had smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Let me say it again. Verse 2. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Now, no, they, people be like, that's not about the Messiah. That's about the northern kingdom coming back in covenant. But do we not Remember what Paul said? That there's a veil over the minds of the people who reads the Old Covenant. 
there's a veil in their mind. And that veil is done away with Christ. And then you got Christ who comes in. And what does Christ do? He reveals the true meaning of the scriptures because according to Christ, they all testified of him. So now let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go to Jonah now. Jonah 1, 17. Jonah 1, 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah 2 and 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. 9 and 10. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So you clearly see we have one, two, three, four different biblical verses dealing with the three days and the three nights and how after the third day restoration occurred. A person was revived after the third day. So, Here's one more hint, and then we're going to read what, what uh, Paul said again and what the Messiah said again, and then we'll open it up and see who, who got to say what before we call it a night. So this is what was, remember, uh, I don't know Emperor DNA. I don't know if he's been in the room to listen to the whole thing. So don't put him on stage yet until everything is done, if you guys don't mind. Because we just don't pop on the room and come straight to the stage. Because we don't know your motives. And we know you haven't even heard nothing really we didn't say it. So just wait. And if you're still in after this, you can come on up. So now, this is what, remember, Christ said the things testify of him. So, here's a statement in Hosea. I think it's in Hosea 13 and, or it might be 11. Yeah, 11 and 1. Listen to what Hosea 11 and 1 says. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. And we know this is dealing with the Exodus. And when people look at this, they say, hey. That's about when Israel came out of Egypt during the Exodus. So, okay, okay, but so now, once you look at Matthew, look at what Matthew says. Matthew two. And fifteen. And what there, and sorry, and was there until the death of Herod? Let me start at 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt, I have called my son. So you see how Hosea used that and said it was speaking about Israel. But, but when Matthew used it, 
He said it was speaking about the Lord. Once again, when Hosea used it, he was using it speaking about Israel. When Matthew used it, same verse, he said it was speaking about the Lord. Why would that be? Let's go back to 2 Corinthians again. 2 Corinthians verse number 14. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. See, Matthew's in Christ. Matthew's reading the Old Testament. He's saying this is about Christ. People outside, they're saying this is about Israel. Let's keep reading. But even to this day, first century, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. So he just taking it back to Torah. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So when you got Paul saying this in 1 Corinthians 15, again, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received. Paul said, I'm just going to tell you what I was told. See, this ain't something that's out in the open. Paul was explaining this. So I'm going to tell you what I received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you go to Luke 24, 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures because they didn't understand yet that they might understand the scriptures and he said unto them thus it is written it's written down and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem so that's written down according to the scriptures when you put on Christ and understand the scriptures are a testimony of him. So if the people looking for direct words to say the Messiah will die for your sins and he will be resurrected on the third day. If you're looking for that in the Old Testament, you're not going to find it this stuff is found when the veil is taken away and you understand that the scriptures are a testimony of the life of christ uh mute my mic with that thank y'all for listening in uh this is opening up if anybody got anything they want to say All right, nobody got anything to say? I'm good.
All righty then. Well, hey, Brother Sharp, thank you for listening in, and thank you for telling me about the brother. Uh, I wasn't going to let him up anyway, and I and I ask everybody, um, moderators, when people come into our room, if they just pop in and raise their hand and come on stage immediately, do not bring them up. Unless you know them uh, and they're good brothers, do not bring them up because it's impossible for them to even know what's going on when they want to pop in the room and come straight to the stage without listening to anything. That's a, that's a recipe for disaster. And I know my good brothers, I know we want to stay away from that. So, uh, and I definitely appreciate y'all for not bringing that brother up. Well, thank you, brother Sharp, or uh, brother Lord. I saw brother Leroy in earlier. I appreciate him. Uh, thank you, sister Apple for being in the room. Brother Bless, thank you for being on, on stage with us. Demond, thank you, Brother Joseph, for being on stage. Demond, thank you, Brother Tony, for being on stage. Demond, and Brother Dem And I appreciate everyone for listening in. This is Elvin Israel from the Assembly of Sound Doctrine Chandler speaking on the three days and the three nights and what it actually meant uh, using es esoteric knowledge. Y'all be blessed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like and share.